What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. You know, for me, a lot of times I forget what day of the week it is. Without football, it's like every day is the same for me because, see, you know, Cop Pizzle says he is a 60-minute man. And that's cool that he's a 60-minute man, but what about the other 23 hours of the day? See, I'm a 24-7 kind of guy. I am going all the time. And this is where I don't I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But, you know, when people challenge me, I got to come back and I got to come back strong. My man, Game Time Brian, Game Time, stirring some shit up. I'm sitting here watching where he tells me I need to take a nap because I'm not getting any younger. And he pointed out all these younger people that are, you know, having issues and things like that. And the reason why some people have issues that are younger than me is because they're sitting around on their fat ass, not busting a hump, and they're weak. They're weak. That's right. Because, see, when you work for a living, when you get your body moving, a body in motion stays in motion. And I'm trying to understand how you said not once, not twice, but three times you called me big boy. What are you trying to imply? That I'm a fat ass? Is that what you're trying to say? Okay. And if I am a fat ass, and that's more of the reason why I need to move. Because I got a lot to do, people. I got a lot to do. And see, listen, I am not by any stretch of the imagination saying that Stephen Jones is great. I'm not. But see, you know what? I'm at least happy that he's trying to do something. Okay, because I will never, ever belittle somebody who is trying. Because see, here's the thing about trying. You don't fail, you just give up. Now, I'm not going to say that he's doing you know, fantastic job and stuff, but I'm going to remind you because we keep focusing in on the stupid shit that we do, right? The stupid shit. I get it. We've screwed up in situations. But you know what? As we're praising people like Howie Roseman, Howie Roseman is the guy that gave up all that draft capital to draft Carson Wentz. Howie Roseman is the guy who literally literally paid him that new contract. Howie Roseman is the guy that got drafted Rhaegar instead of Justin Jefferson. He got white side, that receiver, that he literally screws up too. Okay? Jordan Davis. Oh, and then Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis. So don't act like everybody else out there is perfect. Because you know what I remember? I, I tell you what, I'm going to give you an example here here game time i'm gonna give you an example because see the cowboys and stephen jones stephen jones when he decided to do some of the moves that they made they literally said we were going to be ass ass in fact fact game time let me play this let me show you something here getting in my shit listen to this he let you guys say whatever you want to say for like I, my time, my three years there, there's only one time, Sean, that they said, yeah, don't ask that question. Everything else, it's been fair game. Yeah. Not everybody does that. We start with the Washington uh, commanders. Yes. Yeah. Their flagship station saying, oh, thank God we can talk about the commanders now. <laughs> no, no longer affiliated with them. Right. So, but I looked at really, when I, Kevin, when I looked at just like a day by day timeline. Day by day. You know, they beat the Eagles day on January 8th. Day. They lost two out of their three games, right? They blame the officials for basically two of the three losses, which is terrible. Dak Prescott sits there and endorses fans throwing junk at officials after the San Francisco game. He has to come out and apologize. You've got a PR director who retires. Nobody, no big deal. Two weeks later, he has, there's this horrible story about him being accused of voyeurism, which he denied. Yep. But the Cowboys have to throw a $2.5 million check at four cheerleaders. Dak Prescott has another surgery. The Cowboys trade a wide receiver that they used the number one pick on back in 2018 in exchange for a fifth. 
because the coaching staff doesn't like him, right? Then they give all this money to a guy who tore his ACL on January 2nd. Michael Gallup's not going to be ready for camp, right? Tank Lawrence is their best pass rusher. He comes back, which is – that's a highlight. Jerry Jones gets named in a, you know, Springer-like lawsuit. <laughs> Randy Gregory, whom the Cowboys stuck by despite the fact that he had done nothing for them for years, yep. gives them the middle finger, right, on a flip. Then they've got to cut Lyle Collins because the coaching staff didn't like him. But – they kept their punter. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, Mac, why, why is Stephen Jones the Alan Greenspan of the NFL? <laughs> That's a great one-liner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, because it's so – we see all these teams talk about, we're in cap hell, we're in cap hell. And then they go out and they trade for Tyreek Hill or they make these giant moves and add this big contract. I know the salary cap is a real thing. And, you know, I've talked to Stephen Jones, whom I like a lot, and he's – he has come to ad- admit and embrace the idea, if you're going into free agency, that means you're overspending on that player because you made a big mistake two or three years ago. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's sound philosophy. Yeah. And are you getting any better? Are the Dallas Cowboys today, no. today on March 23rd, pardon March, March 25th, are they any better today, Sean? No. No than way. They were on. Okay. Okay. So, game time. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Now, that was doom and gloom. Everybody laughed at the Dallas Cowboys because if you remember, let, let me let me see if I can play another little tape here because let's get a little bit deeper here. Let's get a little bit deeper with Skip. What, the money that we paid you, we going to need some of that back. You pro- oh, let me back it up a little bit more. Seemingly, hopefully, he has those behind him. The Cowboys like to protect themselves. They put language into the contract that mm-hmm. if you get a fine or something transpired, some of the guaranteed money they can recoup. Um, if you're working on a job, and let's just say you work there for six years, you get a fine, you get in trouble, and your job comes to you and say, you know what, the money that we paid you, we gonna need some of that back. You're probably going to look at them sideways, and that's what Randy Gregory did. Randy Gregory said, hold on, wait a minute. You mean to tell me the Broncos have the same amount of money on the table, mm. the same guarantees, but none of this language? Yep, that's what I'm telling you. Okay, well, let's go to the Broncos. Mm. And that's what transpired. Now, I heard see a lot of people say, well, the Cowboys do this in all their contracts. No, they don't. I know a guy that just signed the biggest contract in Cowboys history. And guess what, Skip Bayless? He doesn't have this language in his contract. Uh-huh. I wonder why. It, it's not a guarantee. Mm. that uh, There are a lot of teams that don't put this language into the contracts. The Cowboys do. Mm-hmm. I got no problem with the Cowboys. But you can't have a problem with the player saying, well, I don't want that language in my contract. I don't want to have to pay the, uh, the guarantees back if I get a fine or I get suspended. So I have no problem with what Gregory, Randy Gregory mm. did, Skip. Mm. And it wasn't like he had his name on a contract. But I don't know how. And I don't know the very moment that it transpired that billionaires and teams have been able to convince their fan base that if a player does something that's in the best interest of themselves, they're selfish, they don't care about winning. When teams cut players with three years left on a five-year contract, when they cut players with two years left on a contract, Mm -hmm. all they say is business. He's right, right on that. But here's what's funny. Here's what's funny. Universally, everybody condemned the Cowboys because Stephen Jones literally said game time that right there, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, you know, he's right there as far as production wise as Randy Gregory. And people laughed, including me, including me. I said, hey, come on. man!" And guess what? You have to look right now as Randy Gregory hasn't even contacted the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where he got signed for $3 million, $3 million. He didn't show up for OTAs. He didn't show up for minicamp. The team ain't heard from him that Stephen Jones and the Dallas Cowboys made the right move. And that team that they talked about how much they sucked, how bad it was run, ended up being 12 and 5. Now, I'm not going to turn around and say it was great things, but when you hear them say that other teams make bold moves and they go out and they get themselves a Tariq Hill, did the Miami Dolphins signing Tariq Hill, are they a better team right now than the Dallas Cowboys? 
are the Denver Broncos after signing Russell Wilson, a guy that Cowboy fans said drop Dak Prescott and trade for Russell Wilson? Are the Dallas Cowboys, would they have been better had they made that move that the Denver Broncos did, giving up several number ones? Would the Cowboys have been better having re-signed a Randy Gregory? Now, I'm not here to defend Stephen Jones, but here's the thing. A lot of teams make a lot of mistakes. A lot of them. Teams draft Josh Rosens and think that they're going to be the quarterback. And then they turn around after one year and draft a Kyler Murray. And the jury's still out. People told us we should try and get, um, damn, uh, Deshaun Watson. How's that move looking right now? Now, listen, Stephen Jones makes a lot of mistakes, a lot of them. But unless you are the Kansas City Chiefs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or the Rams, Everybody else is making the same kind of mistakes as well, bro. Same kinds. Would I like to see Stephen Jones get better? Yes, I would. Would I like to see Stephen Jones getting these contracts done early and not making mistakes? Because the bottom line is everybody makes mistakes out there. San Francisco gave up three number ones plus to draft the Trey Lance. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Right, right or wrong? Everybody makes mistakes. Just saying. For a team that is as bad at managing shit as everybody proclaims, you got to admit that they've done a few things all right to win 12 games Three years in a row. Now, game time, get off my back, man, calling me big boy. That's big man to you. That's big man. And telling me I need a nap. Naps for old farts. I do fart, but I ain't old. Take that. And have a nice day, mailman. And appreciate you delivering the